combined defense services know the best of what they need. There is no doubt that uh, a rocket force would change the methods of warfare. Uh, we will have to leave it to them on how they do it and what are the numbers they need. But uh, uh, let me tell you, BrahMos is an integral part of this, the new rocket force when it comes out. It will always be there because we are actually a frontline weapon of the Indian Army. Uh, we have already four regiments of BrahMos with them. They will automatically, I, I, if the rocket force actually comes back, I am sure that they would get added in in some way or the other. And uh, depending on the size of the rocket force, I am sure they are going to ask us for many more uh, uh, missiles. I mean, I, we are looking forward to getting more orders from the Indian Army. Right now, the S-400 is only with a few countries. Uh, as of now, we still say because of the reaction time that would be available uh, from the launch of BrahMos to its impact, uh, it still is a very, very difficult thing for any surface-to-air missile to uh, intercept BrahMos. It's been done, uh, not hitting BrahMos, but is a bullet hitting a bullet has been done. I mean, uh, any anti-ballistic missile defense system itself is a is a very mean feat, and it's really something uh, which proves a lot. But uh, a cruise missile is totally different from a ballistic missile. That's why we looked at cruise. You are at a low altitude, so it reaction time and the capabilities are fully tested for uh, uh, defending against it. Would be very very tough. As of now, I, I still very confidently say that uh, uh, a supersonic cruise missile is literally impossible to intercept. Even if it's intercepted, you've intercepted one, maybe two, but you won't intercept a, a, a barrage or a, a salvo of four, five, six. That would definitely uh, be able to slip through. That, that's the whole philosophy of a cruise missile system. You can call the P-800 Onyx uh, a precursor to BrahMos. Uh, the uh, P-800 has its limited capabilities. BrahMos is a much, much better version of that. So uh, that was being produced in their country and it still is being produced in their country. And they moved from the P-800 to another uh, area of work. And they are happy with that type of work which they are doing. Uh, but we have been continuously looking at uh, Russia as a market for the BrahMos. Uh, if they had purchased it till now, then they would have had uh, quite a few things in their current uh, situation. But uh, I actually expect uh, at the end of this current geopolitical situation in Europe, which is going on, uh, we might get a few orders from uh, the Russian Federation, especially for the air-launched uh, BrahMos because they don't have any equivalent of the air launch BrahMos. I must tell you that there is no equivalent of the air launch BrahMos today. It's, it's actually a fact. So I, I actually see that as a, a total game changer in terms of exports and things like that. If you uh, ask about it, the Philippines uh, National Defense will be looking at uh, more without doubt. Because once you have one thing, you get used to it and you would like to, what uh, works should be uh, increased so that we expect that someday, uh, let's see, I mean, since the first order is still ongoing, obviously, you know, it takes some time for uh, a second order to come. Since 2001, uh, when we, after we had our first trial, we've been out in various exhibitions talking about BrahMos. People have shown a lot of curiosity in BrahMos. Uh, be it uh, the NATO countries, any of the Western countries, everyone around the world, everyone wants to have BrahMos, there's no doubt. Everyone, there's one naval chief who said, uh, uh, I don't want to be on the wrong side of this missile, I want it on my side. But well, uh, uh, I don't think he would be uh, in the race for that because uh, there are other things. Uh, any country which is acceptable to the government of India and the government of Russia, is eligible for buying BrahMos and there are a number of these countries. I mean, you can actually count out and it's half the world.
Largely in Southeast Asian countries and Latin uh, in America and in Africa. Yeah, I, I, I mean, uh, it's automatic that uh, since we broke in with the Philippines first, the Southeast Asian nations are our first uh, uh, potential uh, customers because uh, when you got in one, then you might be able to get into the others. That's, that's one thing. And largely, again, because of the geopolitics in, in the area which is there. Uh, that is definitely an area which we are looking at very closely. There are quite a few nations there uh, talking to us. The uh, Middle East is very interested, without doubt. Uh, we, we hope to make uh, leeway there. Uh, there are uh, a couple of Latin American countries looking at it very closely, very, very closely. And uh, we've been in talks with them. There, there are, uh, uh, as you said, the African countries also. Less in number, but uh, they are also interested. So I would say that we are in talk with about a dozen countries. When and how, you know, it's, it's, it's a complex issue. Uh, it's an expensive uh, piece of weapon and it requires uh, go-aheads from that own, the buyer country has to also go through uh, 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 thinking. Do we need it? Do we need to spend so much and do we want to show a bigger alignment with this uh, set of uh, people. There, there could be a lot of issues, political, financial, there's so many things. So, uh, balancing all this takes time. When uh, everything gets balanced, I guess something will happen. Karan Brahmos, as we know, is capable of uh, land launch from the mobile autonomous launchers in a coastal battery formation or in a land attack formation, uh, capable of being launched from the ships, again anti-ship or uh, land attack, from the air, anti-ship, uh, land attack. We have done one trial underwater, so we are capable of being going on submarines, the current Brahmos, what I am talking about. But then that depends on the uh, requirements of the uh, users, but we have proven that it is uh, capable. The next version of Brahmos, which I said, is nothing but a miniaturized version of the current Brahmos. So it will be capable of all these things. All, 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 all these things. things. Submarine will be able to carry more? Uh, yeah, things. I mean, right now we are not on submarines, but uh, if and when it comes up, maybe, yes. And that it requires a lot of uh, thinking about that. So right now we are working on the smaller version of Brahmos for air launch, because that is where we are putting our thrust. We see a massive business sense in that. We are designing for the LCA. The LCA would be able to carry two Brahmoses instead of so just the one. Work has already started. Pardon me? You know, yeah, the work has, work has already started. We, as I said, we finished the preliminary design. We are, going, we are getting ready to cut metal for that. And uh, we will be uh, doing trials, not with the LCA, we will be doing trials with the uh, Su-30 initially because it's, we know its interface as well. To work out for the LCA, there is a little more uh, development work which would be required. But we are designing for the LCA with the idea that down the line, the LCA becomes a total package. Light combat aircraft Tejas equipped with Brahmos NG and the Astra missiles, totally Indian. <laughs> it will be massive. So that, that's what we are looking at. So and LCA 1A you could Yeah, LCA 1A. And naturally to go on to the uh, post of that, uh, the LCA Mark IIs and the uh, rest of the aircraft. But the big advantage which we are looking at is once we are able to put on the LCA, that means we are now designing this Brahmos for being able to put on any western platform. It would be capable of being put on any other western platform also. Uh, that's right. Uh, what uh, with the formation of the Brahmos Aerospace, at the same time the idea was to get into production as soon as possible. Uh, within uh, three years we managed to design the uh, missile, integrate it and do a test. In 2001, uh, June we did the first test. And uh, as early as 2004 we got our first order, so that's within six years. That itself uh, shows the effort which we had to put in. There was a vision that uh, there will be an industrial complex sitting along with Brahmos Aerospace to manufacture this uh, missile. Missile and the missile system. Uh, it was, when it started, it was the, the ground complex is totally Indian. So that's 100% Indian design and Indian manufacturing. The missile we started with only 13% at that time. 
but over the years, uh, over the last 25 years, we've upped this percentage to now 76 percent. Uh, this was all possible just because of the industries who chipped in almost immediately. A couple of the uh, public sector and private sector, large industries, chipped in and uh, became partners, literally. I mean, uh, the whole idea of saying vendors at that time was out of question because uh, they put in money themselves. It was not that they were given money to start their manufacturing. They put in money themselves. And uh, we started doing the airframe uh, manufacturing in the country. Today we have uh, 200, more than 200 industries on board as part of our supply chain. Uh, this was a first. This was absolutely a first because uh, whatever be the other uh, systems in place in manufacturing in our country, they were all in-house with one single industry. This went on into many industries. The other uh, uh, weapon systems or large uh, defense items which have come out have slowly followed this uh, same philosophy. It's a very massive uh, development. In fact, uh, we sometimes like to say that we started the Make in India movement and the Atmanirbharata movement uh, before actually we started using the phrase Make in India and Atmanirbharata. But then uh, we say that we are the torch bearers, we are the uh, flag carriers of both these uh, statements. You see, uh, again, this was a question which has been asked right since 2001. Our warhead is a small warhead. Uh, it's only 300, maximum up to 300 kilograms. So I think that question answers itself automatically when we talk about that. And uh, uh, personally, as a young boy, when I got into the project, and I, I did tell you about uh, the attraction of working with Brahmos is, if it stays a conventional warhead, it can be used. The day it becomes nuclear tipped, uh, one would find it very difficult to use because you don't know whether this is nuclear tipped or not. So, uh, well, if it's required, we we'll look at it. I won't say we can, I'll say we will look at it. But uh, uh, as of now, I would say no, we are not, we are going only conventional all the way. Brahmos, okay, uh, if we take that we started our deliveries in 2005, we are only about uh, 20 years in. Uh, it's, a, it's a missile uh, which will be used for a very, very long time. Even today, uh, the subsonic missiles are being used all over the world. Uh, so, the supersonic missile is always a plus. Hypersonic is another plus over that. So, the, uh, maybe, you see, what happens is the costs also go up. The same way, a subsonic missile is much uh, much more cheaper. A supersonic is more expensive than a subsonic, without doubt. A hypersonic is even more expensive than even the supersonic. So, uh, uh, looking at, as, as, as we said, the cost effectiveness, Brahmos would always be treading that middle line. And uh, who knows, Brahmos will go hypersonic one day. Uh, once the technology bricks are available with our two designers, uh, DRDO and Piyomash, uh, they may say, come on Brahmos, let's, let's, let's create the uh, missile with the hypersonic. So, we, we, have, we have it in the plans, but that's an extremely long term plan. Uh, it costs money to do R&D and uh, we are looking at uh, the NG first because that makes a bigger business sense. A hypersonic uh, article, till now we haven't got any uh, requirement from the users in terms of, everyone says I want, of course, everyone wants the lollipop. Uh, but what would be its cost, the development cost is large, the cost of the article or the missile at the end of this development and when it go into production will be huge. So, uh, is it worth it, is it cost effective, does it make a business sense, all that we are going through right now. And we'll see whether uh, we go that side. But a hypersonic weapon is required by every nation who's developing. One, the technologies which you learn, it improves your industry. It improves uh, the mindset of all the people working on it. And uh, newer the technology, newer learnings and the better the future also. Uh, it goes uh, somewhere. So, but uh, Brahmos right now is concentrating only on the supersonic areas. We will go hypersonic or we will look at hypersonic once 
the actual uh, technology stabilize right now it's it's only r and d there's no uh, no weapon as such uh, inducted into the forces which is fully hypersonic yes the ballistic missiles are hypersonic they go at max 6 max 7 max 8 but they are ballistic they are not cruise the cruise hypersonics that is the scramjet based hypersonics or uh, ramjet can just about touch hypersonic uh, that is uh, still in r and d kinzel is, kinzel is uh, reported by the media that uh, it's been inducted uh but uh, kinzel is not uh, again a cruise missile it's ballistic it's air launched or ground launched ballistic so ballistic is it's but naturally you take something up and bring it down it's going to be hypersonic so but it's it's not in two sense it's not a hypersonic cruise bramos is into the area of cruise so we will be working more in that in that area rather than going into Uh, the ballistic part but who knows we might move into the ballistic also if if uh, we are uh, asked to by both the uh, all the users we have to wait and see I mean, it's an evolving area